Many people see huge difference in hacking and using Metasploit or other automated exploitation tools. Still, uh, these tools pave the way to quick and easy system analysis. Yesterday and today, we have heard talks concerning software and hardware vulnerabilities. Hardsploit wants to make it easier to look and analyze those vulnerabilities with your devices. Sometimes it is just about having the right tool. Here now to present the right tool are Julian and Gwendolyn. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, you are uh, a lot. <laughs> That's an amazing surprise for us. Uh, so I'm a little stressed, of course. <laughs> um, so let's get started. Uh, with this presentation of Artploit, uh, we intend to show you uh, the goal between the, the, behind the project, the goal we want to reach, and uh, how we are going to reach it. Uh, we will end the presentation with uh, a live demo of the tool. Uh, we like to live uh, dangerously. <laughs> so before starting, a quick introduction about us. Uh, so I'm Gwen Oleodic. Uh, I'm a pen tester and a software developer, among other things. And uh, therefore, I'm in charge of the high-level, high-layer level parts of the Artploit development, like the graphical interface. And of course, I do love uh, hardware hacking, and that's why I'm working on this project with Julien. Um, I'm Julien Mona, and an uh, electronic engineer, and uh, I'm software pen tester and hardware pen tester, of course. And I'm a DIY enthusiast uh, uh, guy. Um, because it's not expensive and it works perfectly. And for Arxploit project, um, I'm the uh, low-level uh, developers, and I create the, the board <coughs> and develop all the code for uh, microcontroller and uh, VHDL for the FPGA uh, module. You, you understand what's FPGA after. Okay, so the Arxploit project is based on uh, a simple fact that is the following. The gap between hardware and software security widened since the 2000s. Uh, I think we can't really argue with that because we read and hear a lot more about software stuff being broken and fixed every day rather than hardware itself. And we think that it's because mainly uh, the hardware is a way to get access to the software. And no. Okay, sorry. So, <coughs> uh, the, um, so it's, uh, the hardware is more a uh, way to get access to the software. And that's very important for uh, what's going on right now. I'm sure you, you've read a lot about the Internet of Things until you get fed up with it. <laughs> uh, these things that we are talking about uh, are hardware products, hardware stuff, going from the simple smart T-shirt to the smart thermometer that, uh, that is going to regulate the temperature of critical devices. Uh, don't ask me why you have to add the word smart before everything related to IoT things, I don't know. Uh, and so just to say that it's not only about computer anymore. And the question we ask ourselves is, security speaking, is hardware the new software? Uh, we will have in our hands a lot of products, a lot of electronic products, able to connect itself to a network, and we need to assess their security. And to assess the security of the software part, uh, we have made a lot of progress. Uh, we have uh, great products, we have great services, uh, great tools, and if you try to compare it to the hardware part, uh, you can see that we have very few or uh, unimplemented <coughs> solutions. And so we think that it came from a lack of awareness from the designers. Uh, for the little example, uh, one of our clients was wondering, uh, reading the audit report of his product, uh, how do you guys manage to get my firmware? And the answer was really simple. It's we use the same way you use to put your firmware in. <laughs> yes, it's true. Yeah. So quick, uh, quick and dirty 
procedure for hardware hacking. Uh, let's imagine you have uh, a thing in front of you, uh, an object, uh, an electronic product, and uh, you want the pot potential sorry, data that can be stored in, in it. So the first step, of course, uh, is trying to open the, the product. Uh, so some designers try to protect this step by making the product really difficult to open. Uh, so of course, it's not the best solution because if someone really wants to open the product, he will be able to do it. He will not just be able to rebuild it and make it work again. Uh, step number two, fingerprinting. Uh, so when you have your uh, product open, uh, you will find a PCB, probably, with uh, a lot of components, electronic components. And you just have to read all the references over this component and to find uh, the interesting one. And this step is the uh, read the fucking datasheet step. Uh, oh. And when you have detected the interesting components, like memories or uh, microcontroller, Uh, you are going to use them, so you have um, two ways to do that. You can unsolder the component and try to plug it on another PCB to work on it more easily, or you can directly connect uh, the tool you are using, you, are, you, you use to the component to perform an uh, online analysis, so both ways. And then when you are connected to it, you try to perform read and write operation uh, to access the data. And when, of course, you have the data, you are going to reverse engineering the process to try to find vulnerabilities and <coughs> to exploit them, of course. This is our purpose, our exploit purpose. It's to, <laughs> well, it's to dump all the data. We want to do that. Uh, so, but beyond that, we want to make this uh, step number four right here to be a child's play, okay? And we want to dump all the, all the data, allowing someone that is just able to read a data sheet or to solder uh, one or two wires to do that, to dump the data. So the goal is to create a bridge between the hardware and the software. Um, most of the time, uh, software pen tester know how to access the software, but when you have hardware, it's more complicated sometimes. So the goal uh, today is just to present you a tool to create a bridge, to, s to have a simple way to read the same data as a software pen tester have. I tell you before that my profile was more about uh, software yeah. stuff. And a guy like me should be able, and now I'm able to do it, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, to, to, to interact with electronic components without having to struggle with uh, a lot of documentation and things like that, and uh, to know all, all you need to know uh, about electronics to do that. Um, so, oh, oh, why? Why would you want to dump data? Okay, that's a bit of a silly question. But um, because, of course, uh, you can find a lot of interesting information in, uh, inside memories, inside microcontroller. Uh, you can find passwords in clear text sometimes. It's the equivalent of the sticky note Uh, on the screen of the computer or under the keyboard, but for hardware. Uh, you can find uh, file systems and firmware. And yeah, maybe you're just a curious person and you just want to know how the electronic product you just buy work. It can be just that. And you should be able to do that. And so, How do you get access, how do you interact with an electronic component? You are going to use buses. So here is a, a not exhaustive list of them. Uh, we can find the SPI, I2C, uh, GTAG. So you may be familiar with this, um, these buses. And so the more buses Artsploit can handle, and the more we will be able to interact with electronic components. And this is our goal. So you may wonder, okay, but I know some tools that exist and uh, they do the same, uh, they're the same as Asploit. And we, some people ask us this question uh, a lot of time, so we just create a quick review of the existing tool. So like uh, Buzz Pirate or Gitagulator, GoodFet, uh, our sound tool, we are using them uh, for our audits. But 
because we use them, we, we know uh, what are their limits. And uh, we took inspiration from them for Artsploit. Uh, so you can see that, uh, for example, uh, we are the Artsploit uh, manage the parallel bus, uh, the, so the parallel memories. And we focus mainly on modularity. All the tools are based on microcontroller, and we use uh, FPGA uh, that uh, can be coded uh, with uh, VHDL to, be, uh, to improve modularity. If a new bus uh, came out, uh, you, we can, we can be, um, we can, we can, it, it can work with Artsploit. Okay. So here is a little uh, communication slide. How uh, Artsploit? How you interact with, with Artsploit? How do you use the tool? Uh, we st we start first with the higher level, uh, the GUI, so the graphical interface with uh, that is developed with uh, Ruby programming language. Uh, so the interface speak uh, communicate with the API. Uh, Artsploit is connected to the computer with uh, USB 2.0 uh, communication. And then uh, Artsploit uses his microcontroller as a bridge to communicate with the FPGA and the FPGA memory by using the SPI bus. And then the FPGA, uh, that's the, the, the big part. Uh, it's this component that is going to, to manage all the, the bus we can work with. And so the FPGA, with the compatible bus, will be able to interact with uh, the GPIOs of Artsploit uh, in order to work with, to communicate with a target. So you can see a quick list of possible interaction, uh, like sniffing, reading, writing, and uh, executing custom commands. And what you want if you create a custom module in FPGA, uh, you can send uh, another one and you can interact or create something uh, like, uh, I don't know, what if you want. If you know about VHL, you will be able to create uh, your own Artsploit module <coughs> to work with a specific bus. Yeah, for custom protocol, for example, or something like that. Okay, the prototype making. Uh, so we are a little company, so we use uh, DIY low budget type solution. Uh, we just buy it for our first prototype. Uh, we just buy the PCB. And uh, here you can see, uh, yes, you're not dreaming. It's uh, duct tape and PCB scrap to hold the board. <laughs> it's uh, the, um, the way we use to apply soldering past on the PCB. So and for that, we, we use a stencil. And when you, you put the solder past uh, through the hole, uh, the solder past uh, put on the top of the PCB, on the top of the board. And after, you need just to put your uh, microcontroller or FPGA or 64 LED <laughs> manually, <laughs> for example. And uh, you can create your own board like that. And this operation uh, requires a lot of uh, accuracy uh, because the FPGA, for example, have uh, like uh, 64 pins yeah. and uh, they are really uh, close to each other. No, more, more 144. More oh, okay, sorry, <laughs> sorry for that. And so, step number two, uh, you've placed your component uh, with your little hands on the board, on the soldering past. You use this <laughs> slightly modified oven um, <laughs> to uh, to uh, melt the soldering past, uh, so it's a classic oven, of course, uh, slightly modified with um, an appliance that uh, Julian developed. Yeah, it's not perfect, it but works. it works. You have to open to <laughs> but lower the But for the last here. step, <laughs> you need to open <laughs> the door <laughs> to <laughs> to decrease the temperature. He told you DIY, DIY. Yes, <laughs> I'm DIY enthusiast. And. <coughs> So, okay, the reflow one, and this is the V0.1 uh, Artsploit prototype. Okay, don't leave the room now, it's just only a prototype, okay? Uh, we called it the Green Goblin, so a huge baby, as you can see. Uh, so we have the 64 GPIOs uh, at the bottom, the FPGA uh, in the center. And Christmas Day. Okay, day passed and uh, Julian uh, improved the process. And so 
we gain a budget, and uh, with this budget, we were able, able to buy uh, some uh, more efficient tool. Uh, so the stencil, first photo to apply the soldering past, so no more uh, no more duct tape anymore. Uh, so the, then you have the pick and place machine to uh, just put your component on the soldering past. And trust me, when you have uh, like 64 leads, uh, L -I -L -E -Ds, sorry, to place, uh, it can be very useful. And we have the brand new reflow oven. Uh, I'm not sure you can cook pizza in this one. Uh, my boss didn't allow me to try. Yes, yes you can, but uh, Jan, if you, you need to if you're watching, watching, please, <laughs> for science. <laughs> um, so for hardware, it works pretty, pretty much well. Okay. And it's the result, the final version of uh, the board. So smaller, of course. Uh, we have uh, 64 uh, GPIOs, like I said, with uh, LID for each of the, of the pin. Uh, you can connect a target uh, working on the 3.3 or 5 volt. Uh, so we use a Cyclone 2 FPGA, a USB 2 uh, communication, like I said. And, uh, and you have a um, protection. Uh uh, against uh, ESD uh, discharge. It's important when you plug and unplug. Uh, As you can see, uh, yeah, it's not the, the size of a USB key, but you can hold it in, uh, in one one. Okay, oh, here, it's better. So you c it's pretty lightweight and uh, fit in one one. Okay. So how do we organize Artsploit? So with Artsploit, you can, you can uh, plug, uh, wire your target to Artsploit. You will be able to manage a list of components that you have created. Uh, so you can search components, create them, share them. Uh, you have the commands, commands part. Uh, for, a specific com uh, for a specific component, you will have uh, commands. And then the interact uh, module, uh, where you can find the, the list of the buses we can uh, interact with it. For the graphical interface, uh, I, I use the Qt, well known Qt library uh, with the Ruby programming language. And I divide it uh, in uh, three parts. So you have the chip management to manage your components, your, ele your electronic components. Then you have the wiring helper to help you wire uh, your target to Artploit. And then you have uh, the command manager to create commands, uh, to edit them, classical. And it looks like uh, this. Uh, so this is, for example, on the middle, the first window that opens when you launch Artploit. Uh, you can see that we have a table with several components. Uh, so the current chip we are using is a 24LC64. Uh, when you work on a specific chip, it, uh, it will appear in uh, the tree, you can see, on the left. Uh, you have several options. Uh, the wiring helper, you can edit your component, of course. Use it uh, as a template to create uh, another similar component. Uh, delete, uh, obviously, and under the manage uh, option, you will have all the buses compatible with this component. So here, uh, it's uh, an, uh, uh, the component use the bus uh, I2C, the I2C bus. And you can add uh, specific settings uh, that we ask for this bus. You can use the custom commands menu. You can import and export. Uh, the export is like the dump of the content of the, the, the component. And on the right, it's the form to create a component. So we ask for the reference of the component. We ask for the voltage. Uh, we ask for the manufacturer, the type, the package. Uh, all, all the information uh, required are, uh, you can find them in the component data, data sheet. So nothing difficult. And the last part is, the, last part is, um, is the pin, the pin uh, table. So uh, we have uh, like eight pins for this component, and uh, we only use uh, pin number five and number six. So we can see that they work on uh, I2C, 
and we have the signal, signal associated to this, uh, to this bus and to this pin. Okay, so the important part, uh, it's the wiring helper. It's one uh, of our uh, favorite modules. It hel hel helps you uh, connect your target to Artsploit. And I'm colorblind, so I don't like to yeah, try to put the blue and the, the pink, uh, no. We work by using LED. So here is the data, data sheet representation of the component. When you have created, created in Artsploit, you can use the wiring uh, helper module and it gives you, uh, it gave you uh, the rep uh, another representation of the component. And we can see that here we have the, number, uh, the pin number uh, five and six. And if you want to wire the SDA, for example, you just have to click on it. And when you click on the pin, uh, it will automatically uh, turn on the, the LED, the specific LED on the board. And so you know where to connect this pin to Artsploit. Yes, so here. Yeah. Uh, for each pin, you, you have a LED to to explain to to show where you need to to put uh, the wire. Uh, I don't know if you use Bus Pirate or something like that. Uh, sometimes it's very boring to find the good wire, and sometimes you have a big joke. If you want to put, uh, for example, SDA for E 2 C, you need to put your wire on Mozi, and you don't know why. So it's not easy sometimes. We try to make this step really simple. Okay, I'm going to be quick on that because we are going to yeah. see that in the live After. demo. And, uh, yes, a word about uh, the API. Uh, so you can uh, use it freely, of course. Uh, if you don't want to, to use the graphical interface, of course, you are not uh, obliged to. You can uh, create your own if you want uh, and use uh, the API with your own program. So it's really open, uh, well documented, so don't, don't hesitate. Okay, so what's already available for Artsploit? Uh, we can work with parallel buses. We have the helping wiring. You can work with I2C memory, I2C bus, uh, SPI. We are compatible with uh, SWD uh, for GTAG. And uh, you can use uh, 64 uh, GPIOs uh, for your convenience, uh, to do some bit banging, for example. So that's what we have for the moment. And what we want for the future, uh, it's, for example, the component and command sharing platform. Um, for software, we can find a website with uh, a lot of exploits, for example, <coughs> and you can download them and uh, use them uh, in tools like uh, Metasploit. And I want the same for Artsploit. Let's say you can download a component with uh, his commands and uh, integrate it to your Artsploit. Uh, you will have uh, your Art module, the parallel communication, but, but with, with uh, multiplexed memory, I2C sniffing, SPI sniffing. Uh, we want to add uh, wireless communication too for a training platform. Uh, Metasploit integration, of course, of course. Uh, so just launch the Artsploit module on the Metasploit and uh, you will be able to use Artsploit. So we are working on that. Uh, the GTAG pin-out finder, the one-wire, uh, the CAN bus, etc. The list goes on. And now, because a live demo is better than, uh, than a speech, uh, we are going to show you a concrete case of, uh, by using Artsploit. So let's imagine we have a door uh, that, is go that uses uh, an electronic lock system. So you have a pin code to enter, uh, A, B, C, D, four letters. Uh, if the combination is right, uh, the LED turn on, and if uh, the combination is wrong, of course, the door stay closed. So, what can we do? We open it, and we find that, okay. So we can see there is four buttons, A, B, C, D. And then the fingerprinting step. So we can see that we have uh, one SPI memory, two I2C memories, and one microcontroller, okay. Online, offline analysis. Are we going to unsolder the component or just to plug wires directly on it? Your choice. And that's the scenario. We open Artsploit. We create the component. Uh, we connect the component to Artsploit. 
we enter the component settings, of course, and then we dump the content firmware, the content of the memories, and well, we will see what we can do with that. Okay, so first, we are going to work with the I2C bus. Yes. No, that's not Tor at all. <laughs> <laughs> no, of course. <laughs> okay, so we launch our split. So yeah. the first step is fingerprint, of course, and uh, trust me, uh, on the board you, you have um, a memory. Uh, we start with E2C, and in fingerprint we, find, uh, we found uh, two memories. So when you know uh, the E2C protocol, you you, you need to know you have addresses, uh, etc. So with E2C, just click on the memory and you can use um, a function to scan the bus. And after that, we have a list with all uh, available addresses. So it's very uh, interesting because we just uh, two click or something like that, you have information, how many memory are available. Of course, you, you can see with your eyes on the board, but uh, you need to go on the data sheet, etc., to find the good address because the address for E2C is hard uh, and you need to put some wire with pull down or pull up for the guy who knows that. So it's easy to click. So uh, for the demo, we, we set the setting to A2 and A3 because uh, the sensitive data is in this memory. Trust me. <laughs> and um, if, if you want to dump all the content, you need to read the data sheet to know all the size of the memories, uh, where I need to read, etc., etc. Write the pointer. It's too complicated. Not so the case anymore. Just. Double click on export, okay. And choose, uh, yes, we can use the same. Replace it, okay. So this is and a dump. Choose full dump. Just click full export, okay. And it's finished. It's finish. So just click on the file. Uh, of course, I use Bless on a Linux. Maybe you use another tool, it's not a problem for that. And now you can read all the contents. Uh, for the demo, it's, it's lots empty. of FF. <laughs> but if you, if you, oh, what's that? <laughs> of course. password. Yeah. <laughs> Snap. <laughs> <laughs> so it's true in the real life when I yeah, use some it can, hardware. It can happen. You, it can happen. <laughs> you, you can find some sensitive data like that. It's true. So here, of course, it's just uh, uh, for sure for the demo. And uh, you can use it to open the door. We, we can try uh, now. And the goal after is, for example, to change it and try again if you can change the password. We, okay, we do that online. Let's try to change the password. So. Uh, so the first step is just to check if this password is a good password. So uh, ACDB. ACDB? Yeah. OK. Uh, so can we please have, like the, yeah, okay. So I will so to be sure. Yes. A. No, 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 no. Oh, no, it's not. Oh, do some. Right. So, we start again. Oh, no, nope, no, nope, still not. Where is the board? Yeah. It's not easy. So, password ACDB. A, C, D, B. So, of okay. course, uh, we, we have... Okay. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> of course, this demo is easy. But now we, we, change, we change the uh, password and try again. Uh, so don't forget, you, you can remove the password and uh, do some uh, sort of denial of services, for example. If I put uh, a shard difference or ABCD, you, 
it's not possible to, to type uh, this password. Open the door you you create a, a DDoS, a sort of DDoS. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the goal today. So to change the password, uh, you, you can dump all the content, change with your preferred uh, uh, software, and uh, you can put all the data inside the, the memory after. But you need to rearrange the content, etc., etc. So maybe we, ca we can just create a custom command to read the memory, for example, in your hardware hacking stuff. Or you can just change for sure. Uh, when you create a custom sh a command, you can just change uh, the data. So of course, we create a lot of uh, command for demo or something like that. So today, we can change the password with, I don't know, BBCC Let's say or BBCC? Yeah, yes. So uh, just so you know what a command yes, says. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so it's a command, it's just a name, a description, and a list of bytes uh, that you can see in this uh, array. And all the commands of the components is in the data sheet, so I won't be long on that. And we want to change the password, so when the command is created, you just have to execute it. Okay, we see that you we receive have ACK we have because in ACK. ACK. You, you can receive ACK, so it seems to be uh, or so okay. Let's try to dump the content again. Yes, to be sure. To be sure, we change the password, we read again and check if the password changed. Okay, replace. Full export. Okay. Yes, it's not at the beginning. Ooh, okay. okay, so we can see that the password is changed. We can test so it. So the, the next more. step is to try uh, if the password is right. So for that, we go again on the, on the board and uh, BBCC. So B, B, C. Uh, it's okay, yeah. C. Okay. Okay, of course. So the goal is just few commands or few click. You, you can create your own command. When you do some hardware hacking, you need to create a custom command most of the time. And it's very boring to create. A, you, you can create your, your own script, uh, it's true. But here, it's just few click. And I know all the people like a command line. But sometimes, just two click, uh, it's cool, I think. Okay, uh, uh, I think it's okay for it to see memories. So um, we can do de uh, a demo with SPI protocol. Uh, when you do some uh, hardware hacking stuff, you need to know about E2C and you need to know about SPI, of course. Um, so the next step, we will close uh, all to be sure no problem. Okay. Um, I replug another wire, so I don't know if it works the first time because I just put, uh, but I think it's okay. The first step is the same. You check the wire, wiring, to be sure all is okay. Uh, no, no, no here. Uh, sorry, yeah, it's the same. Of course, when you have two wires, it's easy to plug the wire. We have five wires. It's not complicated, not easy, but it's not complicated. So to be sure, we just uh, check if it's all is done. If you uh, put, I don't know if so you see. Here we want to connect the CS pin to Artploit. So we click on it, and here you can see that we have to plug the CS pin on the, the first, first pin. The first pin of our It's also bottom Recent and the right. Then okay. you just have to repeat this operation for the three other pins, and it, it will be okay. It will be good. Uh, just check my ISO because oh, I'm not NS sure. No. 
Okay. Uh, okay, all this seems to be okay. Okay. So now let's continue with so the SPA. We we have exactly the same commands. So let's try uh, exports. Okay, uh, SPI replace food export. You can see that Artploit is processing behind. Okay, it tells you when it's over. Oh, another password. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at the, at, at the, the beginning of the file this time. So we, we can try if you want uh, to be sure. But before we can change, it's the same, uh, the same things. Uh, we, we assure you that it works. So you, you can show um, just the command. I think it's interesting for SPI. It's just uh, if you have a flash or something like that, you need to uh, to to send a write enable, uh, and uh, for that just. That's, that's, a Just specification. Click that's a specification of the component. You have yeah. to enable the writing before being able to write, of course. So first we enable, OK. OK, it, the command is enabled. So but now you can write on the memory. Six is a byte to enable the writing. Yes, you, you have this information on the data sheet. And then we change the password. OK, we see that we send uh, um, 66, it's uh, the B letter, uh, the, the equivalent in hexadecimal of the B letter. And, and to so be sure, we read again, dump again, the same things. Okay, dump over. Okay, so. so Perfect. I to see SPI. <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, it's that. the same thing. You you can try uh, the password. Uh, of course, is the same. And um, you you can try your custom if you want to read. Uh, I don't know uh, a six byte at ten address, address ten etc cetera, etc. Cetera. You can create your own command. It's, it's very easy if you need to to use it um, a lot of time. So it's very good for that. Um, OK, the next step, um, we have a micro uh, microcontroller. So yeah. we may be able to dump the, the firmware of the, of the lock, of the electronic lock. <coughs> all the people know uh, SWD uh, protocol or not? It's OK for all? OK? It's like a G-tag, uh, but for uh, uh, ARM uh, processor, OK? And with the custom uh, protocol, <coughs> uh, very well documented. So uh, for, um, for the, the G-tag, the SWD, you don't need to create uh, the component uh, in Artploit. You just have a simple uh, menu right here. And you have uh, four options, that is detect, export, import, and erase. So first, we want to detect if the wiring is OK. Yeah. And to do that, we just click on Detect. So behind, uh, we upload the SWD firmware inside the FPGA. Then we execute the Detect command. And we can see that, well, we have some information. Yes, for the moment, it's just the beginning of uh, SWD uh, module uh, for Arsploit. So for the moment, uh, you have all the information of the target. And after that, you, you can map very easy uh, to dump all the content. If you read the, the data sheet, uh, you, you can read uh, for this ship, you need just to use this address with this size. But the size, you can read the size of the flash directly inside the microcontroller, yes. So it's an uh, automatic uh, tool because SWD protocol um, uh, send uh, good information to read all the content of the flash. So it's perfect. If you plug, just detect to be sure uh, all the wire is uh, done, and after, just import or export, like a dump. Uh, it's okay, easy. Let's, let's try the dump, for example. So same as usual, you select a file. Uh, so 
logfirmware.bin. Okay. So asploit is processing. Okay. And okay, here we have the, the electronic lock firmware. Of course, without readout protection for the experts. <laughs> And uh, if you read the content with readout protection, you you read only zero or FF is depend uh, is depend on on the, the microcontroller. So uh, most of the time, uh, you you can read the firmware like that. But with uh, not easy tool uh, like OpenOCD or something like that, it's very good tool, and uh, we 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 need to have a framework with all tools inside the same and. It's for that we create Asploit, like that. We want an all-in-one tool. One tool, two click for SPI, two click for H2C, two click for SWD. I'm expert on uh, hardware hacking, and I, I need to, to keep, to, not to lose my time, uh, just to create a bridge between the hardware and the software. So now, with a few minutes, it's possible to read all the content. So now I can focus on uh, reverse engineering. Okay, it's for that we, we create, we, we use this uh, tool uh, all the day. Okay, so, so we, we have a, a string uh, at the bottom, of course, uh, for uh, a serial communication or something like that. You, you can read all the content here. You, you can inject a backdoor or something like that if you want to, to reput the firmware after. Uh, we have some uh, checksum control sometime, but it's not security. So it's not a problem for that. So now we, we erase all the content of the firmware, and we read again, and we just put again the firmware to, to demonstrate oh, it's very easy to, to dump and to write again on the, side, or on the target with just a few clicks. So we erase the content of... Are you sure? Uh, yeah, I'm yeah? sure. <laughs> Let's do that. <laughs> OK, it's over. So now, if you try to enter the password uh, of, the, of the, the electronic lock, of course, it will not work. Yes, we, we can. Um, oh, we, yeah. yeah, if you can switch, just. Yeah, if I, now, if I put on some button, uh, no, no more light. Point. No more light, uh, of course, the firmware is erased. And now, let's just import the firmware again. So change, uh, change maybe the the firmware to keep mm -hmm. uh, change the name. Uh, oh, well, okay, yes, we can take it. Yeah. Okay, so Asploit is writing the firmware right now. Okay. 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 Let's try to see if so. Okay, now when I put the button, we have a live again. Okay. So it's perfect. The right work with just uh, one button, one file, and two seconds. Okay. So of so course, you. Yeah. Thank you. You can have a lot of fun. Uh, here is, <laughs> yeah, well known, well known router, uh, Linksys router. Um, Linksys use, uh, for example, uh, so you fingerprint, you open it, you fingerprint. We see that we have uh, memory that is uh, using the, um, the parallel bus, and so it's always uh, the same, uh, the same thing. You, we unsolder it and we resolder it on uh, our own PCB, or you can use um, custom, uh, custom um, a board. board. Uh, yes, because very. Um a fine a pitch and uh, a very close, and it is uh, most of the time it's not easy to, to just put a wire. And if uh, you can't create your own PCB, you can use this kind of device. So I'm DIY enthusiast, and so I'm electronic engineer. It's not complicated for me to create the custom board, but sometimes for hobbyists or just to check, or I don't know, you can just use a socket uh, wi without solder. Uh, yeah, without solder. And so now, now you understand why we have 64 <laughs> uh, GPIOs, yeah. uh, because of course, uh, parallel bus uh, need uh, a lot of, uh, of uh, GPIOs. And if you want to put uh, this wire, uh, you can use Asploit for each uh, wire. 
and it's very interesting when you need to put uh, about 60 or 64 uh, uh, bits. So we were able to dump the content. It's the same process uh, that we, we have seen before. Uh, so it's, I think it was uh, OpenWRT firmware. Yeah, we yeah. That. Uh, so we are not going to remake the process, but it's exactly the same. With the Squash FS, etc. today is not the reverse engineering talk, so <laughs> it's for that we, we don't explain. It's not directly the firmware, huh? of course. It's a uh, Squash FS, a read only uh, it's a five a system, system, five yeah. system. Yeah. So then you will have to remount it. Uh, but it's not the exploit task for that. Yeah, okay. uh, it's uh, open firmware, so <laughs> it's not uh, very interesting to jump. Uh, it uh, was mainly for for testing the, yeah, the parallel bus, just for demo. Okay, I think we are over. And uh, of course, uh, if you want to learn more about uh, our project and to follow us, uh, you can go on the website. And uh, if you have questions, any question, or yes. yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you again for that uh, very interesting talk. The demo gods were with us, lots of live demo time. Mm. So are there questions in the audience? Yes. I see one over there. Please come to the microphone. Uh, yeah, can, uh, just uh, 64 bits of input, but uh, can you also apply an external clock and actually have the input latch, for example, parallel bus? and actually latch it into the FPGA uh, using this external clock, so you can get the maximum clock rate. Uh, for parallel, you, uh, we, we are in asynchronous uh, mode, so it's not necessary to plug the clock. But if you want, uh, you can just create a custom firmware, and you can use uh, the clock of your uh, system. But you need to, to send the clock, so you can generate the clock by uh, FPGA. For to, to be more simple, it's just asynchronous and just generate address, and uh, it's worked perfectly. But What's the maximum clock rate you can uh, sample on? Uh, sorry? The maximum clock rate to sample uh, uh, it from uh, ah, the clock domain from the FPGA. Um, you, you don't have a, a sample, but I can, uh, it's not a sample, it's just a latency, and we, we have about uh, seven uh, nanoseconds. Oh. Okay? So please leave the room quietly if you really have to leave now. Otherwise, think about staying for a few more minutes. I guess there are some more interesting questions. I heard there's a question from the internet. Yeah. Um, hi, I'm over here. Oh, yes, so, thank you. Uh, can you say something about the difference between Hardsploit and maybe a common FPGA development kit like a Cyclone starter kit with an expansion board? You have the same FPGA. So, of course, if you put my firmware inside, it works uh, with the same uh, behavior, of course. But don't forget, um, you need to program your FPGA. So for that, you can use a blaster, for example, or uh, external tool. So uh, here, we, we use a microcontroller to program external memory, uh, to program the bit stream, et cetera, et cetera. So we, we, we are create um, a big uh, bridge between uh, FPGA and uh, uh, graphical interfaces. So, in fact, you have a uh, graphical interfaces, API in Ruby, uh, um, uh, communication with microcontroller, and microcontroller communicate with custom internal protocol with FPGA. And inside the FPGA, yes, you have uh, uh, two uh, modules. We have Asploit Core, and uh, to create some communication with microcontroller, etc. And now we, we have a module, so if you need SPI, you just create SPI uh, um, state machine, and you, you can fill a, a, a FIFO, first in, first out memory, and it's okay for you. After that, uh, Asploit Core do, the, the, do the, the process and process data, and all is done for you. So in fact, you have an array data, uh, uh, array on Ruby, and you have a FIFO on the VHDL.
and you can do what you want. Okay, so it's true you can use uh, uh, the, the demo board, but you need to program, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah, you will not have the full process, of course. Yeah. Okay. The next question over to the side. Uh, two questions first. Um, I looked at the site, but didn't see any schematics, source codes, whatever. You will release them? Uh, so, um, for the moment, um, we are talking about it. Yeah, yes. We, of we course. are not sure uh, for the moment, but we are talking for about it. For the moment, uh, graphical interfaces is open. Uh, if API. you don't use it, uh, it's not a problem for you. Uh, mm -hmm. But you, you can use API. Of course, API is open. and. Now you can use a very little uh, line, uh, Ruby line, to, to un interact with SPI. For example, just create a uh, split object, and mm -hmm. just the next line is dump. Okay. So today you, you can use split like that, just two line of uh, Ruby code. Mm -hmm. For uh, the schematic, schematic, for the moment is not open hardware, mm -hmm. but. Uh, maybe change. Uh, not maybe sure change. About that. Yeah. 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 Okay. Second question: um, Such a project lives by a community because you not you probably cannot go and implement all kind of protocols and uh, yes. And set it up. Yes, but of course. And, and the goal of Asploit is to create uh, a database like um, Metasploit. And you you see we have only five. Um, mm -hmm. It's not true. Um, we we have um, more than like. It's just for the demo. But we have a problem because if you are an expert, it's not complicated for you to create a, um, a command and uh, um, and target. And another people can use it just like that with two click, of course. Mm -hmm. But in real life, it's just two click because you you need to create. And the next step. It's to create a community to create uh, a command. Mm -hmm. But it's not enough. It's true. Mm -hmm. we, we need to create another module. And it's for that we, we try to, to, to change uh, the thematic uh, license, etc., etc., to, I hope, uh, uh, answer your question yeah, really. uh, for the community. We, yeah. we will rely on that, uh, a lot uh, uh, on the community to um, to share their, uh, their components they have created or their commands. Uh, so someone that don't know how to, to interact with a specific component, mm -hmm. he, maybe will, he may find the component online, download it, and add it mm -hmm. to his exploit, and he will have nothing to do that just clicking. Mm -hmm. Okay. So at the beginning, yeah, at the beginning, exploit is for internal purpose. And, yeah, we, and now uh, I think he, you, you are here, so it seems to be you are interesting by Asploit. So maybe we, we can change uh, this. It's yeah. still in development, of course, and we yeah. are thinking uh, the, the, way, the way to adopt. Mm -hmm. and yes, to, because to we use Asploit all the day. So yeah. I, I think we, we can increase the capability of Asploit with you. OK, then next question. Again, another question from the internet. The internet has you? no sound. Yeah, no. Uh, can you think of uh, known limitations to Hardsploit? So, will there be any components or protocols that will never be supported, or can never be supported? Um, the limit is the same answer. It's a seven nanosecond latency, and after that, you can create uh, what you want. Not exactly. You have a problem with uh, internal uh, memory of Cyclone uh, 2. So um, it's complicated to answer your question, because the goal of our split is to create a framework, uh, and versatile framework. And of course, you, the limit is only 7 nanosecond latency, because we, we, we work uh, 150 uh, megahertz. Uh, and is, uh, for, for the bus we want today, we are not limited by the FPGA. So just with this uh, feature, uh, this uh, limitation, uh, just seven nanoseconds, yes. Okay, thanks. Then next question from in here. Yeah, yeah I think the time-consuming thing will be getting the data sheet and modeling the chip. 
And uh, I think it's a great idea to have a sharing platform for this. Yeah, but, yes. Uh, right. Intermediate step. How far are you? What is your internal database that you have right now that you when, you, when you get it right now to the market from the first step without having the sharing platform? Okay, uh, what we give in the database uh, when uh, someone gets a product? That's what you... Yes. Oh, yes. Uh, well, uh, we, the component we, work, we, we have worked on, I think, uh, and uh, the, the one you can... Uh, we, we, we are going to give um, a component for each bus so that and commands so that people have uh, can take example on uh, on those components to adapt to their own components yeah. if they are not using the same. And don't forget, for example, uh, the button uh, full dump, full export, etc. Uh, it's automatic, and you need just to specify the size of your memory, and all is automatic. So if you want to dump uh, 64 kilo uh, memories or uh, 32, etc., it's the same. Just change the size, and the size is on the title of your data sheet. So, for example, for, for SPI or E2C, it's not a problem to have a custom memory, uh, custom command because you don't need. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So maybe it would be a good idea to have an inherit uh, command to take the uh, chips you already have and just change them and have another one. Yes, database. you can. You yeah. can use uh, the existi existing component as a template to create yeah. another one. Okay, I think we have time for two more questions, perhaps. Please. Will you be able to do detection of JTAG and serial on if you don't know which points on the board? Um, yes, yeah, it's, it's for that. So for JTAG or SWD, most of the time <laughs> you have on the top or on the board SWD and uh, TMS, etc., etc. So it's true it's in this example. We know the card, so it's easy. Uh, it's just the beginning of SWD. It's for that. It's not very clear for uh, SWD. But um, in fact, we have only two wires, and uh, you can uh, read the, uh, the data sheet, and you can find a clock of uh, SWD, and just use a multimeter to find the pin on the board. And for Asploit, we, we add the buses uh, next week uh, to use uh, with uh, helping wiring. Yeah, the, the question was, uh, how do you connect the SWD to Artsploit or to the target? No, no, I was just wondering whether, whether you have the same functionality as JTagulator has now, where it oh. will, it, you, you connect it to lots of points and it will attempt to identify which points are JTag or serial. Oh. Oh. Um. I'm not sure I understand. So say you have a board with no labels and you're trying to find where is the serial interface or where is the, which, are the, which are the JTAG pins and JTAGulator will, will try to... Oh, yeah, yes, I, uh, oh, yes the, it's, it's not a brute force for the moment. If you, uh, yes, I understand. Okay. So uh, for the moment, uh, you, you need to put in the, the right way, the right uh, wire. If, if not, it doesn't work, of course. But it's FPGA and you, you can uh, create an uh, algorithm to to brute force like uh, Jitagulator. Yeah. If you go on rsploit.io, uh, uh, for the next step, is the first step. Uh, yeah. We are going yeah. to implement this functionality. This functionality so you yeah. will be able to connect the wire and just launch the detection. Mm -hmm. okay. So it's, yeah. it's on its way. And you can replace Jitagulator with, with this tool. Mm -hmm. But it's not the goal of rsploit. It's just to have a framework. Uh, because we, we, we love this tool. It's the beginning of our hardware hacking. But we want to, to put all the good tools inside the same and uh, the community you can, can use it easy. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. So thanks again for the questions. Uh, the speakers will perhaps be outside in a yes, minute for course. further questions. But uh, I think we can all give you a warm uh, applause. Thank you for your talk. Thank, Thank you for listening. You.